It's kinda worth it, yeah. It depends on what you're looking for. The Battle Bus is only available to buy with 1950 gold, which roughly translates to the 10 euro pack, and you will have some gold left over after you buy it. It is called Season Zero, since it's their first time making a Battle Bus, and it's pretty much a test run, so they can collect feedback and make Season 1 the best it can be. Now, this is the first time ever that an item in this game can only be bought with gold and not credits. Heroes and Generals was known for not hiding anything behind the paywall, not even the premium account option like all the other free to play games, but this just changed. However, the items are not overpowered or give you any significant advantage in the battle whatsoever. They are mostly boosters and cosmetics. While grinding for the battle pass, you will earn 120,000 credits and 120,000 war funds. 7 rank XP boosters, 10 veteran account days, 3 physical training ribbon boosters, 4 tactical ribbon boosters, 3 battle ribbon boosters, 6 by the time you finish grinding for the battle pass, you will have even more of this by simply joining daily and claiming the gifts. Remember that the ribbon and rank XP work for all your soldiers, even the generals, no matter who you had selected when you activated them. Also, if you happen to activate this 4 hours before the servers go down for maintenance or hotfixes, they will be refounded to you and you can use them again. Speaking of grinding, you will need 220,000 score XP. Now don't be confused, score XP is the clean XP you get from your actions. It does not include the bonus from the boosters, veterans, and membership or matchmaking rewards. It's this thing right here. Every 2000 score you will be getting a reward from the ones I just mentioned and every 20,000 a big unique reward. I will dedicate the final part of this video showing you ways to grind it fast so stick with me. So what are these big rewards? One infantry uniform for each faction. One skin for each faction strong and strange that tank weapon. Three smoke trails that can be equipped on any plane you want, just like the supply boxes. Three supply boxes for a single shot flamethrower. Three supply boxes for demolition kits. One panel trooper uniform for each faction. A winter camo for the Hellcat, Stag, and SU85. A winter camo for the Shutuk Fuzu 2050 3. We don't care, these vehicles are shit. A winter camo for the King Tiger, Pershing, and IS2. A winter camo for the armored spawn trucks. A winter camo for the bikes and the bikes with sidecars. Yes, the bike with sidecars. Edgar is a different vehicle and not an upgrade. And the final reward, unlimited face paints for all your infantry soldiers on all three factions that you can switch freely for free. Yes, that's what freely means anyway. But to remove it, you will have to pay. No, the face paint cannot be equipped on recons, paratroopers or any specialist for that matter. So it doesn't really make you more sneaky, since if you play infantry, I'm assuming you fight in the objective and not hiding in a bush. Isn't that correct, you fucking pussy? I mean, the players in Heroes and Generals have the vision of a T-Rex, because they can't see something unless it moves, even if he's wearing no camo, except the Soviet recon with his yellow pajamas. So I don't really think it gives you an advantage. Speaking of sneaky, are these snow camos really useful? Well, when this battle pass released, the winter update came in with snow and ice in the rivers. The chance of playing on a snow map was 65% and the chance of snowfall was 30%. However, one and a half month later, they reduced the chance of snow to 25% and snowfall to 5%. They also removed the ice and the snowballs. So even if you have them, you risk a 75% chance of being a bright white dot in a brown landscape. And even if there is snow, you can't just stay in a white area and expect to be hidden. You will have to find a dark shady spot to get into, which is no different from having a darker camo. So personally, I don't consider the camos of being OP. The good camos that can actually give you an edge next year when they will increase the snow chance are still available for credits and you don't need a battle pass. Finally, the two supply crates. The single use flamethrower has the same stats as a regular flamethrower, it's very situational and it has the regular cooldown to pick up another one and it's really not overpowered. But it's very fucking fun and very satisfying to get a kill with it. The demolition kit is just a big grenade that you can already buy like a normal person. It can destroy the tracks of enemy tanks easily or even the tanks themselves if they are light armored and you get it right underneath them. But you will need many of these if you were hoping to use them to grind the tank destruction ribbon. You better grind for a Panzerfaust crate which is more effective and you don't need a battle pass. If you want to use them to kill everyone inside the objective, including yourself, and getting a nice report from me because you made me lose 5 HP, go ahead, it's very fun. So in conclusion, 
If you are a veteran, the only reason to get this is to flex some cosmetics and support the game with money. If you are a newbie, the rewards here are very good value for money, since they cost 14% the amount you will have to pay to buy them normally, and I'm only counting the simple booster rewards here. However, that's to be expected, since it's not guaranteed that you will get them. By the time I'm making this video, you have 31 days left to grind 220,000 score, which is enough in my opinion. Personally, it took me 26 days to grind for it, and I wasn't actively chasing to get a good score. Remember, you can skip each level by paying 950 gold or less if you have almost completed it, but you cannot buy the last level. Also, you can still progress the battle pass even if you don't buy it, so you can just grind for it and if you manage to collect all the XP before the season ends, you can decide if you want to buy it or not. Ok, so how do you grind for it fast? Method 1, Summer Depot. Equip your best weapon without modes, preferably a machine gun. Join the Summer Depot versus bots like this. Stand in this spot, since from here you can spot all the enemy bots coming and you will get the extra defender XP score with each heal. It's by far the fastest way to get this, assuming that you join alone and there is no one else to steal your kills. For this to happen, prefer joining early in the morning or late at night where most people are sleeping. It's a very boring method, however. Method 2. Playing with planes and destroying light armored vehicles with your machine guns or cannons. Just destroy bikes, jeeps, spawn trucks and recon ABCs to get many XP, almost as much as you get for capturing an objective. Using your bombs, however, won't grant you that much. If you are lucky enough to have planes while the enemy team has none, then this is by far the best grinding method. However, this situation is very rare and when it happens, everyone in the team spawns a plane and there are no infantry left to fight for the objectives, so you are likely to lose the battle pretty fast, so be cautious. Method 3. Starter Planes vs Starter Planes If you are a good pilot, you can get the same amount of score you get for capturing an objective by simply shooting down a plane. I won't get into details on how to fly in this video though, it's not a pilot guide. Method 4. Light Tank vs Light Tanks as a squad member Get in your most overpowered Light Tank, like the Stuart or BT-7 or Panzer 2L, as a squad member with your friend. Tell your friend to give the order, now get inside the objective and use your machine guns to kill bots. Each bot kill will grant you this much XP for wounding, killing, defending and following squad orders. At the same time, there might be some noobs with their starter machine gun tanks that can even penetrate you to get even more juicy XP. If you are on a steward, you shouldn't have any problem killing all of the other light tanks. Final method, playing recon and hitting people from exactly 200 meters or further away. When you hit someone from 200 meters and more, you get bonus score depending on how much damage you dealt him. No, you don't get more XP if you are further than 200 meters and you don't get this bonus XP if you are shooting at bots. This can be done even easier if you get a semi-auto rifle and equip it with a 4x scope if you are a German or a Soviet. However, if you are an American, you can only put a scope of 2.8 times zoom, but at least you don't have to pay for it. You can just remove it from your bolt action rifle and give it to it. So yeah, you are more likely to hit the enemies, but because you will deal less damage, you will get less XP. It's up to you. Maybe you can even do it with a machine gun, I don't know. If you want to learn more about every single fucking thing I said in this video, except flying planes and driving tanks, you will be sure to find a guide about it in my channel. Check the tips and tricks and the ribbon grinding series. Ok, I know that as soon as I say leave a like or that's the end of the video, 80% of the people watching will instantly leave to go watch the recommended Minecraft Let's Play or one of these channels, however I need to ask you a favor. If you are planning to create a new Heroes and Generals account, I have an affiliate link here. It does not give you or me any benefits or rewards, it's just a link that let the developers track how many people click on it and know if my videos have have any influence and if they bring new players to the game. So yeah, click on it if you plan to make a new account anytime soon. And that's all. Leave a like so more people can get this video in the recommended and subscribe. It costs 1 million dollars and you can never unsubscribe. Ciao ciao! However, one in the half month... However, one in the half... <laughs> However, one and a half month month in a discolor. However, one and a half month month. Yeah, more boosty. In the beginning.